This episode of the Escape Diet Prison podcast is sponsored by the Escape Diet Prison tribe. Do you feel like you need more support? Are you sick and tired of doing it alone, but you feel like you don't have enough money for coaching, for support, for help? Do you feel like you don't have a lot of time, but you really, really want to heal? Are you fed up and know that it's time for some serious change? Then the Escape Diet Prison Tribe is exactly right for you. The Escape Diet Prison Tribe is a community membership on steroids for those of you who are so ready to stop battling food and your body. The Escape Diet Prison Tribe is a place where body positive women hang out to support each other, learn from each other, and finally stop placing their self-worth on what they eat and how much they weigh. Go over to anasophie.us forward slash tribe to get all the details. Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode of the Escape Diet Prison Podcast. My name is Anna-Sophie Reinhardt and this podcast is for all of you women out there who are ready to stop battling food and your bodies and who want to embrace your own fierce, sexy, energetic selves in order to live the lives that you have always wanted to live. Deb and I recorded a wonderful Christmas episode the other day and the recording got messed up. I have no idea what happened. This has never happened before, but this time it did and I didn't want to leave you without a Christmas episode. So here I am recording one by myself. I'm so sorry about this because, you know, I love having Deb here, obviously, and you love having her here and she shares such great wisdom at all times that it's really sad this episode got lost. But I still hope that you will enjoy this episode and that I can share valuable tips with you for the upcoming days. So Christmas is here. It's been, we've been talking about this for a while now and I feel like we've shared a lot of great tips and tricks on how to go through these weeks, the Advent time, the Thanksgiving time, and obviously the Christmas days with ease, with joy, maybe even with a little bit of hope and without the feeling of going crazy around food. However, obviously it is a very stressful time when you are dealing with disordered eating and when you are dealing with feelings around food in your body that are anything but joyful and happy-go-lucky and all of that, right? There's so much out there telling you that now is the time to really restrict, now is the time to watch out, to be careful, don't mess up your body, don't mess up your diet, don't indulge, don't enjoy yourself, just be really, really boring and deny yourself everything and basically be miserable. Obviously, I'm exaggerating a bit, but really, I am only exaggerating a little bit. (laughs) So, but today I have a few last minute Christmas tips for you that will hopefully enable you to really enjoy the coming days and to enjoy the food, feel good in your body, feel good in your skin, and keep the mental stress at bay as much as you can. Now, you know, in the episode that Deb and I recorded, I asked Deb what her favorite Christmas memory was, and she didn't talk about the food, she didn't talk about dieting, she didn't talk about the presents. She said, you know, a few of her favorite memories are the rituals they had when she was growing up, and then afterwards with her children, and, you know, she just talked about the love and the family that gets together at times. Now, there's some stressful parts about that, and I certainly can relate to that because I have a very big family, and there's, as you know, with family, it's not perfect. I've always been honest with that. And, you know, so there are things coming up during the Christmas days, now less than when I was very much into 
you know, eating my eating disorder and when I was very much into being thin and when I had all these very severe problems. But still, there are some hiccups here and there. And sometimes I feel like it's best to expect them and to not feel like you're a bad person or you failed at Christmas when things aren't going that smoothly. But obviously, you know, we want it to be nice and we want it to be pretty and we want it to be jolly in some shape or form. I, I, I at least think that most of us would love it to be that way. But, you know, reality is sometimes a little bit different. So whatever you're struggling with this Christmas season, whatever your expectations, whatever your fears, whatever your hopes, the next seven tips will give you tools to deal with that and will serve you as a resource to fall back on when you feel like you're just going a little bit crazy, which is what happens to me often, I feel. <laughs> Although, you know, I've really taken these tips to heart and it's been smoother and smoother every year, which is kind of fun too, you know, to see that, you know, I've, I've just changed a lot in the past few years and Christmas is definitely not about not eating or eating too much or food anymore. And that is awesome. That is something that I cannot stress enough and I cannot celebrate enough and something I'm also very proud of because it used to be all about food, right? And I've talked about this over and over again, how I would start my diet in September when the school year began and I would diet until December 24th and then stuff my face for two weeks until I gained a lot of weight and hated myself and I'm not saying that that if you gain weight, you hate yourself, but that was my experience. Hated myself, felt sick the entire time and thought, oh no, I have to start all over again and, you know, diet and then I would start dieting again. So it was crazy. It was sick and it was anything but what Christmas can be and, you know, is, is really about. And I'm, I'm always trying to hold back with these statements because Christmas is about something different for everyone if you're christian if you're not celebrating christmas if you feel like christmas is just a bunch of bs and uh, all of that but really christmas is not about dieting until christmas is there and then eating until you can't breathe anymore and then dieting again that's not what christmas is about so Let's begin with the tips. Number one is to manage your expectations and to really look at what are you hoping is going to happen? What are you hoping you will do? What are you hoping others will do? And ask yourself if your expectations are within reason or if your expectations are just completely out there. So for us, I think my mom always wanted us to have a tremendously beautiful Christmas and you know we were a very I don't want to say messed up but we were a chaotic family we had our issues and it was for us never perfect <laughs> at all so you know growing up my relationship with my brother and it still is extremely difficult and it's always been at its worst during Christmas time which brought a lot of pain to my mom, which then made me sad, which, you know, just made everything really hard. And so, you know, my grandma used to be there and there was some friction there. And so it was always very difficult. And, you know, and I understand my mom, I want my son to have a great Christmas time too. But I also have, I feel like I've learned from her that if I don't expect a lot, um, or if I don't expect it to be perfect, that it's just going to be a lot more chill. So, you know, obviously, Yuan is an only child, and he is still super excited about everything. But, you know, even if he has a meltdown, I'm pretty sure that it would not ruin everyone's Christmas, because it would just be, you know, that happens on normal days, too. And so Christmas is, in that regard, just a normal day. It doesn't mean that we failed at Christmas. So what kind of expectations are you holding when it comes to how your family is supposed to behave? Yes, but also when it comes to food, obviously. What, what do you think needs to happen, has to happen, is supposed to happen in order to, for Christmas to be a success? 
And, you know, what do you define a successful Christmas anyway? So look at your expectations and, and see if, you know, they're just a little bit too high. And if your expectation can have expectations can be a source of stress and can ruin Christmas in some shape or form for you, or at least make it a lot more stressful and painful than it needs to be. Because really, it doesn't have to be stressful, right? You don't have to cook a three-course meal. You don't have to have everything perfectly decorated. It is not about perfection at all. And if it is, then look at where else are you trying to be perfect? And how can you surrender a little bit to the reality of what is instead of what is supposed to be? Because again, the expectations can be the our biggest source of pain and stress and drama because you know when you have great expectations and people don't live up to those and you don't live up to those or whatever then you can explode right and you could be like oh i wanted it to be that way and nothing is the way it's supposed to be and you know this is all just bad and let's just cancel christmas altogether so think about that write it down look at your list and then ask yourself is this reasonable or do i need to make a few changes to my expectations. That was tip number one. Tip number two is to tap during, before and after Christmas. Now tapping, I'm talking about EFT tapping, emotional freedom technique, which uh, I've been talking about before in this podcast. I have a little program that enables you to start tapping. You can find it over at anasophie.us forward slash shop and it introduces you to tapping. Tapping is a wonderful way to deal with emotions that are coming up and to not let them overwhelm you and to actually reduce fear, pain, anxiety, terror, whatever is going on. You can tap at any time. It's a really quick technique and you know, you can use it under the table. You can do it under the table. Nobody has to see you. It's something that has helped me tremendously in the past that is just like a secret weapon that you can use whenever you feel like, you know, this is all too much. I'm overwhelmed. The food situation is too much. The family gossiping is too much. The expectations I have um, are too much. Um, the feeling of discomfort within my body is too much or, you know, I'm too, I'm not engaged. I'm judging myself in this way or that begin to tap and really tap for as long as you need in order to be grounded again, feel grounded again, come back into your body, mind and soul, but mostly into your body and feel that sanity again (laughs) that we often lose when we are in our own story and when we are engaged in our own drama. So, you know, when your family talks a lot about dieting during Christmas, which is what my family does, then tap, tap, tap. And don't let it affect you. Just because they talk about dieting, it doesn't mean that you have to talk about dieting too. It doesn't mean that you need to engage in the fat phobic conversations that are often happening you know just because others are eating so much that they can't breathe anymore it doesn't mean that you have to do it too if you want to do it if not don't right just because this one person is restricting doesn't mean you have to restrict stay within yourself tap on it you know just continue to um, talk about what is going on by tapping on the on the points that I explained to you in in my course and thereby just by honestly expressing what is going on, whether you want to do it out loud or you want to whisper it or you want to just say it in your head when you're around others, um, it helps to honest, be honest with yourself and obviously to reduce the anxiety Um, and and tapping on the, on the meridians, tapping on the points um, also engages your body, right? And helps to let the energy flow. So it's a wonderful tool that you can use at any moment during your Christmas festivities and obviously during the entire year. (laughs) 
Tip number three is to make a plan. You can maybe write down things that worked for you last year, things that triggered you last year, things that made you feel totally uncomfortable, things that, you know, made you feel better, people who triggered you. How can you plan to deal with the more scary parts? What is scary? And how can you support yourself during that scary time? I wrote a blog post uh, during Thanksgiving that I, I w I'm going to reference in the show notes for this episode um, that gives you a few tips to to deal with you know holidays and scary food situations too one of those things i shared was to write a note to yourself and have that with you so maybe that is what you want to do and you can just really um, be honest with yourself obviously and then step by step plan okay this is what triggers me this is what is scary and this is what i can do this is what was really scary last year and this is what really triggered me last year um and you know made me feel extremely anxious and this is what i'm going to do he scared me she scared me right and, and whatever they said he triggered me they triggered me so think about that maybe you want to write comeback lines maybe you want to just say you know i will excuse myself when they're around whatever just be prepared preparing helps obviously to reduce anxiety it obviously helps to to know what you're going to do because when you are in a situation oftentimes you go to your coping skill most of the time actually and so a coping skill can be binging it can be restricting whatever we're used to and if you have a plan it's more likely that you can actually do something differently because you have done something whereas if you're just in the situation and something happens and you're like, okay, oh, uh, what could be, what could I do? What, what could be the, the other thing that I don't usually do? We never do that. We don't think about it that way. It's not how our brain works. So make a plan on what triggered you and what scared you, what worked and what did not work and how you can deal with all these scary parts in the next few days. <laughs> Tip number four is to focus on what gives you joy during those days, right? What what is what is Christmas about for you? What gives you joy even in all the craziness? Who is special to you? What are you looking forward to? Focus on the positive instead of being scared of the negative at all times. So focus really on what opens your heart, what just gives you that big, big smile and you know how, how and ask yourself how how you can add more of that so what one thing that has been extremely different and is extremely different for me now than you know 10 years ago is that i can actually have conversations with everyone that i can actually focus on the people instead of just focusing on the food and my mind used to be like oh i shouldn't have eaten this i shouldn't have eaten this i really want to eat this i sh i can't i not i've eaten so much already i can't eat this no but they're eating it so should i eat it no i just oh god i've eaten it and i feel so bad now and i need to die tomorrow and maybe i'm just gonna have to go for a walk and you know, just get rid of the calories, burn those calories and blah, 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 blah. That was my internal dialogue for years. And now I can eat and focus on the people around me. I can be a mom. I can be a cousin. I can be a sister during the holidays. I can be a daughter instead of just being the person who eats or doesn't eat. So focus on what gives you joy. And I'm sure there are some things that open your heart and that actually do make you feel like you know it's it's a beautiful time of the year and I'm enjoying myself quite a bit tip number five is to take time for yourself and I feel like this is such an important tip such an important point to remember because we hardly give ourselves time for ourselves in these stressful hectic chaotic days where there's so much focus on family and on others and on giving which is great but we also have to remember that especially when we are going through challenges in life and when we are 
fighting our own internal battle that we need to take time out and focus on what do we need. So give yourself time to meditate. Give yourself time to breathe. Give yourself time to journal. Give yourself time to simply ground yourself in your body again. Give yourself time. Now, you may want to do this in the morning. You may want to do it throughout the day. But it's really important to consciously plan time for yourself throughout the day. You know, if you feel like, well, my family will not respect it, then have a conversation with your family and just explain. And we are now fortunately in a time where self-care is more and more acceptable (laughs) and accepted and is less seen as selfish and all this crap that has been attached to self-care in the past. So just be honest with them and then also set firm boundaries, right? This is as far as I can go and this is where I'm just saying, no, I need time for myself, deal with it. (laughs) Um, Obviously, you know, when you have a family, um, you have children and a husband, there's more dynamic in, in all of this, but still you can and are allowed to take this time for yourself. So give yourself this time. Make this one of the things that is important to you. Which brings us into tip number six. (laughs) Tip number six is to remember that your mental health is your priority. That means if you need to walk away, walk away. That means if you need to go outside and breathe, do that. That means if you need to tap, then tap. That means if you don't want to engage in the fat phobic conversation, you do not have to. That means that, you know, you get to decide what is good for you. You get to decide what does not work for you. You get to decide if you are up for the task of being with your family. You get to decide if you're not. You get to decide and you get to decide based on your mental health. When I was very fresh into recovery, I skipped Christmas with my family because I just felt like I can't cope just yet. I was eating my meals and I was doing okay, but I felt so scared of the holidays that I just said, and I talked about it with my therapist at that time, that I just skipped it and and made that decision for myself to not have those triggers. That was once, and the next year I, I... went back and it was good and I survived and I thrived right and it's been getting better and better since but that was a choice I made for my mental health and there was some judgment and there was a lot of backlash but it didn't matter because I needed to do it for myself and I felt too much caught up still in recovery to be able to to deal with everything around Christmas. Now, it was sad that I couldn't do it, that I couldn't make it, but it just was what it was. And it was a good decision at that time. So what do you need to do to make sure your mental health is your priority and is something that you focus on and not just, you know, say, well, it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal. It is. You are. (laughs) And tip number seven is to just eat what you want. Like seriously, eat what you want. Don't let your story, don't let your past define you. Do not let all the crap that is out there about dieting and not eating and restricting and being careful not to eat that or this. Don't let that keep you from enjoying the food that is there because food is part of it and it is yummy you know no matter what you eat and enjoy what you want to eat it's one day of the year um for germany it's three (laughs) and you know it's just like oh my god the christmas cookies they're so delicious and they are part of this season and we always have a very rich meal rich dinner and it's lovely and it's You know, just there's a lot of preparation that goes into it and a lot of love and it's just delicious. And why can't we allow ourselves to enjoy it? So eat what you want, not what someone else wants you to eat, not what 
someone else tells you you shouldn't eat and just eat, eat, eat whatever you desire and then move on, right? Because, there, you know, we can make up this entire story around it and this drama, whereas if we just use the tools, of course, but also say, you know, I'm just going to eat what I want. I'm just going to do what I feel is right for me. We can relax and we can breathe a little easier, right? All right, so, you know, I hope you will take this to heart. I hope you will eat what you want and I hope you will use the tools that we have shared over the last almost three years here on this podcast in order to allow yourself to enjoy these days and to enjoy the holidays as much as you can and to make the make it the best time that you can absolutely do because, you know, we only live once and it's if you don't enjoy those days, if you don't enjoy yourself, you know, it's just like, when will you? You need to begin at one point. And why not start this Christmas? Why not start today? With that being said, I wish you the most wonderful, beautiful Christmas celebrations and holidays, time with your family. I hope that it's as stress-free and drama-free as possible. Thank you so much for being you. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Thank you for being awesome and for taking this on and beginning the healing journey that your body deserves and you obviously so, so much. I cannot wait to talk to you all again next week. And until then, have a great Christmas and bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Escape Diet Prison podcast. You've reached the end of another episode. Connect with us over at anasophie.us or in the Escape Diet Prison Facebook group. Don't forget to get your free gift, How to Stop Overeating and Feel Confident and Sexy as Hell. Get the five secrets to overcoming overeating now. Just go over to anasophie.us forward slash how hyphen to hyphen overcome hyphen overeating. See you at the next episode.